What's up guys, Andrew Vaney here, and today I'm going to be doing a short little tutorial on how to play my guitar solo from the video I just did with Stevie T. If you haven't seen that video yet, please go check it out right now, it will be linked in the description below. So first things first, I just want to say I am not much of a guitar solo person. I've never really focused on writing or performing guitar solos, so this is one of my first solos I've ever actually written. So if my explanation is a little weird or wonky, please forgive me as I'm still kind of new to this. Now that that disclaimer is out of the way and I have set the bar pretty low for myself, I will now begin to attempt to explain what I'm doing in this guitar solo. So the very first thing I did when I was writing this solo is I actually sent the backing track to my good friend Johnny Chardulo and I asked him what scale it's in because I don't know any music theory either. So he was very helpful and he sent me back a video explanation of a t like the extreme basics of the scale and he kind of showed me like, okay, these are the notes in the scale, so kind of base your solo around this. So huge shout out to Johnny, he was a gigantic help for a noob like me. So after he sent me that video and I finally figured out what notes I could use, I began writing the solo. So here's my explanation of the first of four sections of this guitar solo. Now please bear in mind, I'm playing this on an eight string guitar, but it actually doesn't use the eighth string at all. So you could play this solo in standard tuning on a six or a seven string. It does use the seventh string, but only on the very, very last note, which is just a power chord. So you can honestly just skip that if you don't have a seven string. So with your guitar in standard tuning, the first part of the solo is very easy. The first bar only contains four notes, and this is a common theme that repeats during the solo four times. So the solo begins on the G string and the D string and the four notes are as follows. It is the sixth fret on the G string, followed by the sixth fret on the D string, and then the fifth fret on the G string, and then back to the sixth fret on the D string again. And it sounds something like this. So that's it, really easy. That's the first bar right there. You give it a little bit of vibrato on that last six. So part two of section one is where things start to get a little bit tricky. Um, this basically just follows along with the scale and it goes down to the A string and it starts on the fourth fret on the A string and it goes a little bit something like this. So that's the next part of section one. So it begins on the fourth fret on the A string and then it goes to the seventh fret on the A string, sixth fret on the A string, and then it goes up one string to the D string on the sixth fret, and then back to the seven on the A string, and then the six on the A string, and that little part sounds like this. So that's it. It's all alternate pick and palm muted, by the way. So after that short little scale run, it goes up to the fifth fret on the G string and does a little de descending type thing that sounds something like this. It's just three frets five, six, and seven on the respective strings, and it goes like this. So with those two parts together, it's simply like that. And then the very final part is back to the fifth fret on the G string, and it slides up to the sixth fret, and then it goes up to the eighth fret on the B string and slides to a nine, and then the ninth fret on the high E string, and then back to the nine on the B string, slide down to the eight. So that's like this for the very end part. That and that entire part together sounds something like this. And there you have it. So with those two parts together, session one is now complete. And here's what all of section one sounds like. All right, so now we move on to section two. Section two begins similar to the first section, except an octave higher. So we go to the 14th fret on the B string and it goes something like this. And that is simply 14 on the B string, and then 13 on the G string, 13 on the B string, and then 15 on the high E string, and all four notes together. So now we go into a little bit of a descending run that ends in a tapping lick, and that sounds something like this.
And to play that, you start on the 16th fret on the high E string, and then you do the following, 16 on the high E, 15 on the high E, 17 on the B, 16 on the B, 14 on the B, and then you go into the tapping part, which is 21 and 20 with your tapping finger, and then you hammer on and pull off the 14 and the 17 all on the B string like this. So again, all together, it sounds like this. All right, and that is how to play section two of part two. Now the two parts together sound like this. All right, and then moving on to section three, which is by far the easiest of the four sections. So start again on the 14th fret on the B string. But this time, instead of going up to that 15, you go down again to the 13 on the G string. So the four notes are... So 14, 13, 13, 13 on the B and the G string. Now for part two, you slide from the 13th fret on the G string down to the nine, and then you do a little hammer on pull off action with a slide, and it goes like this. So to play that, you go 14, 13, 13, 13, slide to the nine, and then hammer on pull off, slide, so that's eight, nine, eight, six. And then you go back up to the eight and the nine, and then the eight on the B string, and that sounds like this all together. So the two sections together sound once more like this. And section four, the final section, we go back to the sixth fret on the G string, uh, followed by the sixth fret on the D string, similar to the first section. So again. So that's exactly the same as part one. And then from there, we go back into, again, a similar run as the first one, except instead of ascending, it descends and finally resolves in a chord. And that sounds something like this. Alright, so part two of section four goes something like this. You start on the fourth fret on the A string, and then the seventh fret and the sixth fret on the A string. So, and then up to the sixth fret on the D string, and then back to the seventh and the sixth on the A. So, and then you go down to the fourth fret and the third fret on the A string. So, all together. And it's all, again, alternate picked and palm muted. And the final part starts on the fourth fret on the E string, and then it goes to the third fret, the open zero, or sorry, the open E, and then down to the two on the low B string, if you have it, if you're on a seven string. If not, just stay on the low E, I guess. And here's how those last few notes go. And it resolves in a power chord, which is a two on the B and a four on the E. And I slide up. So the final section altogether goes something like this. All right, so that is how you play my guitar solo in CBT's latest video. Again, if you haven't seen the original, check it out in the description below. And here's a clip of my solo from that video up to speed to get a feel for how the whole thing sounds. Alright, so I hope you guys found this lesson helpful. Please let me know if you enjoyed my guitar solo in the comments below, and if you want to see me do more solos and lead work, please let me know as well. This is uncharted territory for me, and I'm still very new to it, so any comments or criticism would be much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the original video on CBT's channel. Huge shout out to CBT, by the way. I cannot thank him enough for having me be a part of his video. And last but not least, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the notification button 
button. And if you have any other social media, please give me a follow. The links to all my socials are in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and I will see you on the next video.